Hello, my beautiful ones. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm so glad that you found your way here. My name is Carlene. I'm your host. And this video is on the new moon in Cancer coming up July 5th. And it's being accompanied by Saturn and Neptune retrograde. So what does this mean for you? Let's just dive right in and see what it's bringing the collective. And then we'll go, we'll pick a card for each sign and we'll do a little bit of a prompting. Where I'm at, it's been raining. It's been raining so much and it's a really watery element and season that we're kind of moving through. The summer is really heavy on the rain. You're probably hearing it on the window pane as I'm speaking here. And it's been quite the weather. So uh, let's have a look with the collective at what's going on. And I'll be working with the animal spirit, the wild unknown, as well as the wild unknown tarot, because it feels like yeah, it's already you can feel it. It's a very soft, intuitive energy that's coming in. And cancer is already an energy that is very soft, maternal, nurturing, nourishing, intuitive. So this may be a time where people really go into their fields. They're really more sensitive about things. They're feeling things on a much deeper level. But it's also a time where people might be feeling like things are just not moving forward and they're feeling more and more sensitive about it. Now, being in the deep subconscious, because that's where we're rotating with Saturn and Neptune, right? Going retrograde, so going back over things. It may be that things from the past kind of resurface as well to do over or to do different or to have a different look at. And you have the opportunity to do something over again, almost, almost like you're being not confronted, but approached with a situation that resembles a situation in the past where you now have the ability to show that you're doing things differently. Wow, of course, once I start this video, it's like coming down in, in torrents and um, absolutely wild. So let's get some cards going. The Neptune in Pisces retrograde, it, it's going to give us also a feeling of things not moving ahead. Remember that Neptune is the higher or the esoteric vibration of Mercury. It also has to do with communication, but it communicates on the higher realms or in the deeper levels, however you want to see that. So Neptune has to do with visions and inspirations and dreams and these visionary states that we can enter into our imagination. And so when it's going retrograde, it's said that it pulls away the veil that is hiding everything. When it's going forward, it kind of cloaks everything that's going on behind the scenes in the subconscious. But when it goes retrograde, it pulls that veil away and we see, can see all the moving parts. And very clearly, we can see people's intentions. We can see who people really are. And who's really there? Who's really there? And no matter what, right? And um, we can see people for who they are, situations for who they are. And so on one hand, you may be feeling as if your intuition is heightened because everything is coming through much more clear, which means that you're, you're picking up on things, but the translation of what you're picking up on is much clearer. It's much more in your face. You instantly know what you're dealing with. So it can be really potent. And then we're having Saturn retrograde go through. And as I just did a video on that, that's to do with restructuring the structures on those deep levels that kind of work together and how we manifest the things that come through our imagination. So with this new moon in Cancer, it's all about, you know, how do you how do you really work with the impulses that come through you and your new opportunities to truly be yourself in a way, to truly nurture yourself, honor yourself, your true core self, like not the persona that you've created and that you want everybody to see as yourself, but the true self that is expressing itself through your very life at this moment. So this new moon in Cancer, please, what's the main topic here? The main topic? And we've got four cards. And so the first card is the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. And the Queen of Pentacles has to do with providing a stable basis, has to do with um, providing structures. It has to do with nourishing, taking care of things, but also on a resource level, right? On this level of resources, on this level of, um, oh, look at that. We see this, this, oh, look at that, cuddles. It could also be a time where you just need cuddles, like physically, you feel like I just want to cuddle, I just need cuddles, I need somebody to hug me and tell me everything's going to be okay. I need to feel stable, I need to feel structured, I need to feel like everything's going to be um, the right thing here. 
So then we have the magician and the magician has to do with making things happen, right? Making things come about, making things manifest in their own way, making things manifest in, in suddenly as well, moving fast. So this is a period of time where we're wanting things to move fast. We're wanting to step into our power. We're wanting to step into the power to make things manifest for ourselves. Then we've got the page of pentacles. Again, a very earthy, grounded energy, yeah? but it's the softer side of this energy. We're not dealing with the knight or the king just yet. Last card that is coming up is the six of wands and victory. Okay, so this is really, this victory card is overcoming obstacles here. We see the rainbow and the rainbow is, of course, reconciliation. So this card is really showing that, oh, and here we have the rainbow as well with this page of coins. Look at that. Page of coins also has a rainbow. Okay. And so rainbow means reconciliation. And it feels like this is a period of time where with this new moon and cancer, you have the opportunity to reconcile with the deeper parts of yourself, the deeper aspects of yourself that are real, that are true, that really want to manifest itself in this world that wants to show itself in this world. And that during this time, you're being given a stable basis to really have a look at that because it's almost as if it's going through Cancer and Pisces. These are two water signs, Saturn and Neptune retrograde and Pan um, Pisces. Pisces is the end of the zodiac. It's like the drain energy where everything just goes whoosh out and it comes back in through Aries. But Cancer is the drain out. And with these two signs going backwards, it almost feels like this drain is closed. I wouldn't say it's clogged, but it's closed. So things are not flowing out as much as they should be. And we're swimming in this soup and having a look, you know, having to really define what are we swimming in? What is this stuff? Having to really look at how this operates within us, how this works within us, what it makes us feel and see and do and perceive. And then we have the opportunity to make new decisions based on what we've observed and what we've looked at. And the cancer, the new moon in cancer is this opportunity to really make decisions that nurture us, that nourish us, that take care of us from our, from a deep soul place to really look at what do I really need in my life? So if you're the type of person who, let's say, would rather need a lot of closeness and warmth and your love language is touch, why are you focusing, for example, on making things happen for yourself in a way where you're completely disconnected from everyone around you or everyone else? Why are you focused on making things happen to in a way that um, doesn't honor that need within you? Why do you have such a hard time accepting who you are and nurturing that? So this, this gives you a whole opportunity to have a look at those structures that built your perception of what it would take to build that in your world to give you a stability or a stable surface from which to grow out from and how you're not stepping into your power because you're consistently focusing on something that is meant to possibly elevate your value and your work so that others will give you what you're looking for. But <laughs> I know it's a little bit, oh, wow, where is she going with this? But it's really up to you to nourish and take care of yourself, right? So we have these four powerful cards, and I want to say they really are powerful because they are saying, look, you know, when you're looking at these three, we're coming from, or four, we're coming from in the collective, this desire for stability and comfort, which is the queen of pentacles, a sense of belonging as well, a sense of belonging, a sense of connection. And we're moving into, look at this. So the rays of light are moving out from creation itself, which is our desire, our, our manifesting capability. And these rays are going through the page of pentacles and over through the Six of Wands. So it is guaranteeing in a sense that if you utilize this time wisely, if you use the energies of this time wisely to really look into what your soul is seeking to manifest, what that inner being within you that has no age, that has no your inner spirit, if you will, what it's really seeking to put on this earth and in this world, then you really have this opportunity during this new moon in Cancer to, to really make some healing happen on a deep soul level where um, 
you know, things really come come together for you. So it's important during this time that you are soft and you remain soft and flexible. And also that you surround yourself with people, start looking at the people that you're connected to and you're surrounded by. And if they're soft, if they're flexible, if they're gentle, if they're the type of energy that you really want to have consistently around you that bring out the best in you that make you feel good about being you that, you know, but not in a way that that it's, you also have to look at how are you to others, right? So what do you have to offer others? What do you have to, to gift to others? And how do you make them feel? So it's a two way situation always, right? So that's in the collective. And it feels like this, this collective, it's, it's almost like there's a grieving as well, a grieving that is not really being released. It's like there's this energy of holding on to grief, holding on to pain, holding on to this tightness in the world. When we feel into the collective, there's this deep, unresolved, unmelted kind of sadness that um, really going to come up and be visible during this time, new moon and cancer. And we see Gaia trying to flush it away, quite literally, or trying to wash it away. And um, so there may be heightened um, water rains like here with us. <laughs> there may be, but there's something about this energy trying to cleanse itself. But like I said, with the two planets retrograde, it's going to have the feeling as if it's not quite going through, okay? Let's see here. What else is coming up for this? Um, there's this energy as well of, um, yeah, here we have the disappointment, the five of cups. We can see the five of cups here, disappointment. We've got the chariot having to move forward anyways, and having to do so boldly, having to do so with confidence and taking the courage, collective gathering the courage to just move forward in spite of the sadness, in spite of the disappointments. And um, moving forward with courage is going to be a really a strong suit here. But here we have the Five of Swords, which is, um, it is a little bit of something needs to be cut, something needs to be like a minor operation, something needs to be cut, something needs to be um, cut off, disconnected, um, severed, moved, okay? That's going to be clear that in the collective, the collective is going to um, realize or there's, there might be this mood or this atmosphere coming up that something needs to be cut off, something needs to be ended, something needs to be stopped, cut out, okay, cut it out, that's what I heard, cut it out, and um, cut it out, something needs to be cut out, stopped, ended in some way, shape, or form, okay? Overall, to to um, summarize, it feels like with this new moon in Cancer, and we're starting off with Saturn retrograde, Neptune retrograde, it's a very watery sign. So we're dealing with, or watery energies, we're dealing with the possibilities of uh, doing something coming back into our experience that has happened before. This has happened before. This is all, Cancer is also a very nostalgic sign. It, it, it also tends to look to the past a lot. So something coming back into our experience that has happened before, but we now have the opportunity to encounter it from a reflected state, from a reflected viewpoint. We've grown since that time and we're able to make different decisions. We're able to see things differently and we now have the opportunity to deal with it differently. So the the real push is what are you going to do? Are you going to do the same thing you did before? Or are you going to deal with things differently? Are you going to take a different step? Are you going to see things differently? Are you going to look at things differently instead of looking at them the way you have been up until now? So let's say that um, you, for example, and they're asking to deal with it with a softer energy because Pisces Cancer is a very soft energy. Water melts rock and stone, right? So the bigger the challenge that you're facing, how soft can you get in that energy? How soft can you deal with that? And a lot of times um, it doesn't take much when you, you find the right kind of softness. So this could be, um, for example, you're in this hardcore family situation and you could be you know, arguing, you could be putting your, um, setting your position clear, you could be drawing boundaries, you could be doing all the right things in that sense from a logical viewpoint. But 
what about the emotional viewpoint? And have you tried Ho'opono Opono, for example? Have you gotten really soft and just not stood up for anything or stood in for anything, just maintaining your own energy? And um, but at the same time, being really soft and just saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And in, you know, intending that in all honesty, in the depth of your being into the family space and structure. So during this time, you're going to find a lot more success with softness than you will with hitting hard on the, um, on the I'm right and this is my boundary and you better respect me kind of uh, way. That way has its rights and it has its time. And um, but this seems to be a time of more softness and gentleness. How flexible can you be? How transformational can you be? How willing are you to alchemize? How willing are you to dissolve? Because, like I said, water dissolves and then allow to coalesce or to coagulate into something new again. And um, the more flexible you are, the more you're willing to just ho'opono-opono or be grateful or flow with whatever is happening in this moment. And if it's even something from the past that is returning, you deal with it differently than you did before, the more you're going to get through this season. <laughs> so remember, it's also a time that um, you can see things more clearly, right? Because the veil, Neptune retrograde, is being pulled back. So all the moving parts are being shown. So on the one hand, that combined with your intuition, your strong intuition, you're going to be seeing things a lot more clear because you're going to have the intuition and the clear sight, the clarity. And this is being gifted for a reason. Use it wisely. Know who's in your corner. Know who's in your court. Know who's um, the right person for you to be with. Um, know what feels good to you authentically to your soul. And remember that the veil that is being pulled back is not just for you. It's for other people too. It's for everyone to see the truth. So and more truth revealing is going on. More digging into the past and digging up things made things work. So it could be that you are going to end up having to dig through your past as well to find something specific that's going to be a key to your future okay let's see here what else is coming up please what else is coming up for the collective for this new moon in cancer saturn retrograde neptune retrograde and we've got feeling stuck yeah okay so this is a time of being there's a lot at home here we've got the two four cards we've got the four of coins and the four of wands and the four of wands has to do with success and victory is also a masculine card and the four of coins has to do with stability um balancing things out knowing what you have being content with what you have so the temptation during this time is to want to set your boundaries, right? Because it's going to be such a flowy, all over the place kind of thing that you're going to want to stake your claim and you'll be putting your stake into to quicksand because it's just going to sink away. It's just going to melt away. The only thing that you can do during this time is really just flow with it. And um, whatever is going is going. So that's where you're going to find your stability. That's where you're going to find your success. Otherwise, Seven of Pentacles is saying that it's going to be focused on why is this not working out for me? Why is this such a long, slow, hard road to the goal, to the top? Why do I have to? It's literally like I'm rolling one to the next, to the next, to the next. And each one, look how disconnected they are. You know, it's such a hard work keeping all these moving pieces together. So it's also about developing trust, I guess, in the flow of the universe, trust in um, the flow of things, the evolution of things, the growth of things, how things just unfold, and really allowing that to happen for you, and not believing that things are happening against you. Okay, let's dive in and we'll go Aries through to Pisces. And um, I'm only going to pull one or two cards maximum for each sign. I don't want to get too complicated in this. And we can do a journal prompt or something, you know, that you can reflect on at the end of each sign. Okay, pull one card for the overall energies and one card for the journal prompt. Okay, 
for Aries, let's start off with Aries, please. And we've got one card for the journal prompt, one card for the overall energies is you're going to want to move forward. You're going to want to push forward and get things done because you're having the feeling I'm standing in the middle of a tornado. I'm standing in the middle of a storm. And um, you can see the hair blowing and all of it, right? This, this movement that's in the card. And there's this desired move in order to take control of the situation. And uh, you're not going to, you're not intending per se to take control of the storm, but you're intending to take control of what's yours. And so you're trying to position yourself in the right way. But that's just showing that exactly, you don't trust the flow of things. And when you don't trust the flow of things, you go into resistance to the flow of things. And when you go to a resistance of the flow of things, when the universe is moving, it moves. And so whatever is in its way, it kind of disintegrates and dissolves. So you have to be during this time a little bit mindful that you don't try to go with your head through the wall, that you don't push things forward, that you're soft and gentle in your approach, that you kind of take your time, that you focus on the flow of things and not on what do I need to accomplish? What do I need to get done? And um, that you really, you know, stand in on that. So your journal prompt has to do with the two of wands. This can focus in on what is my true vision? What is my goal? What is my true goal in this situation or in life or with myself? Who do I want to be? What am I looking out towards? These are all questions that you can ask yourself and focus on during this time of the new moon. And um, you can start, you know, planting your seeds in your subconscious of where this whole thing is actually going, where this whole flow should be taking you or what you're hoping where it will take you. Okay, moving on to Taurus, your card for this new moon and your journal prompt. And we've got the ace of wands. Wow, you're really vibing with this energy, Taurus, you're feeling it, you're feeling the flow, you're feeling the connection. Taurus and Pisces, um, they get along this energy, earth and water. And so this is going to be a super inspirational time to you where you're feeling like, oh, I'm feeling everything and you're you're feeling super connected. You're feeling the connected to your own feelings. You're feeling connected to your source of inspiration again. You're utilizing this energy in that way. And your journal prompt can be what gives me a sense of belonging? What gives me a sense of home? What gives me a sense of ownership? What, what I need to own in my life or in my being? Um, what are my values, right? So you can feel into that and utilize this energy to get to the bottom of that. And that way you can utilize this inspiration that is coming to you in this time in the right way to, again, uh, manifest your values, propel you forward in the right direction. Okay, moving onward to Gemini. Gemini coming up for you with this new moon in Cancer. Gemini, what's coming up for you in this new moon in Cancer? Gemini, please. And we've got the Eight of Swords. It, yeah, you may feel trapped in some kind of a situation. You're not knowing which way is right, which way is forward. This energy around this time may make you feel like there's no ground under your feet. You're stuck in a specific situation and now you have to wait. It's making you feel as if no matter what you do, you're going to get cut by a sword, no matter which way you open up that wing. So you're just going to wait until the swords fall or the situation, um, the pathway that you should go down reveals itself. And so your journal prompt has to do with the page of wands. What what kind of message am I expecting to hear? Am I open to hear, hearing something that I'm not prepared for? Am I hoping open to hearing messages that are truly coming from the divine? Or am I telling the divine, this is what I want to hear? So you can have a look at that because there's something about communicating with the divine, with your inner being that's kind of blocked. And um, you may be overthinking things a little, you may be taking too many things into consideration, other people's opinions, desires, wants, needs. It's, it's you from actually being that blooming butterfly that you could absolutely be and you need to be. This world needs you in that state of mind and being. So with this journal prompt, have a look at what's stopping me from perceiving messages. What kind of message do I want to or do I expect to hear? Okay. And that will help you remove that block. 
Moving on to Cancer. Now the new moon is in your sign, Cancer. It's absolutely in your sign. And we've got, yeah, the Knight of Cups. It's going to make you feel really dreamy. It's going to make you feel as if all things are possible. And it's opening you up to this feeling of a deep love, a connected love, all the way from from this, this love to the agape love of loving the entire world brotherly. And you've got as your journal prompt, Ten of Pentacles. So what does the world mean to me? What does being in the world and being a part of the world, what does that mean to me? And when you're asking this question as you're, you're into your meditation or your journaling, you can really, you know, dive into to all of that, your legacy, the seeds that your consciousness is planting here, the um, information that you've absorbed, the the that others have learned from you potentially, but also what you've learned from others. Have a look at that. What does that mean to you to be incarnated here on this planet? What does that even mean? What does that mean? Not what does your life mean, but what does that life mean? And um, have a look how it connects with love. How does it connect with love? In, in you. This is also hinting to me that this is a great time for romance and flirting and um, getting yourself, you know, noticed. You can be very coquette and um, people will find it sweet and endearing. There may be someone that is also on their way to you with an offer that would take substantial work, however, to become something solid during this time. Okay. All right, moving on to Leo. Leo, what's coming up for you? The new moon in Cancer and your journal prompt. So the energy for Leo, we've got the nine of cups, yeah? And you're really focusing on your wish fulfillment. You're really focusing on getting your wishes fulfilled, getting everything, your ducks in a row, everything that you desire. And you're feeling more content. You're feeling either more content or you're focusing on feeling content. There's a kind of bringing things to a closure. Things have come to a close at some, uh, in some area of your life, which you're actually quite okay with. You're, you're yourself okay with that. Now, your journal prompt has to do with transformation and change. The two of pentacles has to do with indecisions as well. What is keeping me from making a decision for me? What kind of transformation or change am I afraid of? Why can't I decide for one thing? I have to keep going from one side to the next, okay? These are all things that you want to have a look at, okay? All righty, moving on to Virgo. What's coming up for Virgo? New moon in Cancer, please, Virgo. Virgo coming up for Virgo and we've got for the overall energy Virgo we've got lovers wow so this is real harmony this is going to be a time where you're feeling really in harmony with yourself possibly the world around you the people that you connect with you have the opportunity now to choose the high road to choose the high road of harmony rather than choose the low road of difficult experiences and your journal prompt has to do with atonement and resurrection. Oof, big themes. <laughs> but what am I atoned for? And am I already resurrected? How do I resurrect something? How do I bring something back to life? Is there something that I need to bring back to life within me? That's your journal prompt. Is there something that I need to bring back to life within me? But also how much do I trust the world of spirit? Okay, Virgo. And, um, but it feels like I said, with this lover's card, it's a very harmonious, beautiful time. Um, it's a great time to connect with others, to find connections, soul connections with others, finding your tribe, finding your partnerships. These are all possible during this time, because again, the veil is being removed. So you're actually seeing how you really operate Virgo and what's really important to you. Libra, what's coming up for Libra, please? Libra with this new moon in Cancer. What's coming up for Libra? And we've got, wow, Ten of Swords. Okay. So this new moon in Cancer, it's it's going to be tricky for you because it's really um, highlighting all the things that have come to an end for you or that didn't work out for you. 
And um, it's it's high all of this because it feels like you need to sweep the area clean. You've been holding on and holding on and holding on to all these swords. So these may, may have been failed ideas, projects, um, people, relation, you name it. And now everything's come crashing down. And with this veil being pulled back, it's like the carpet being lifted and you can see everything that was swept underneath. And you're like, oh. And so initially, this energy might be a little bit overwhelming for you because all these emotions that you haven't dealt with, all these feelings and the roots and the seeds and the causes and the connections, they might become visible during this period. You might be feeling a little bit out of your elements, a little bit too emotional, a little bit too soft, a little bit too... And there may be an ego blow that is happening during this time as well. And we can see the obstinacy, the, the headstrongness, and it completely being shut down so there's this uh, this there might be an energy this during this time of feeling like i didn't win this situation i i i'm not on top of this here there's a sadness that i'm picking up coming in from libra as well okay so again all things pass and all things happen for a reason and uh, you can definitely use this opportunity to cleanse out those corners cubby holes nooks and crannies within yourself that are still holding on to this negative energy and uh, to to feel within yourself why am i still dealing with this your journal prompt is the four of cups mm. So where do, because the four of cups can indicate ingratitude. It shows that it's, it has a stance of ingratitude. Entitlement is another uh, energy around the four of cups. Expectation. What were my expectations? Were my expectations not, not met? What did I feel I was supposed to be um, experiencing or seeing or receiving? Um, tiredness, you know, being overwhelmed can also be part of the four of cups. But the journal prompt, like I said, that came through is that, you know, um, what am I grateful for? What am I great? What do I actually feel grateful for in my life? Because you've gotten to a point of, of yeah, this whole, it's, it's having a boil on your skin, but instead of it being smushed, it's, it's, and it all just comes out and um, sorry. <laughs> But it has to in order for it to be cleansed. And then you can see what work actually needs to be done if you can just leave it like that or if you need to sew it shut. Okay. But um, this energy has to go with um, you feeling kind of like my expectations weren't met. And now I'm, I'm satisfied with all of life. Okay. Righty. That I mean, it doesn't have to go because you're probably right. Like something did, you know, but it's not benefiting you. It's not helping you. It's it's you. It's stopping you. It's one of those energy that's that going in the swirl. It's going the opposite way. So the swirl is going this way, and that energy is going that way. Kind of going back over and over and over again, but not with the intention to really transmute and alchemize within the self but with the intention to undo and that the universe is not playing with because it's like you know we laid this track and we laid this road and you're not going to come here <laughs> and rip it all up so have a look at it and um see how it it's learn from it rather than try to undo it or make it unhappen okay on to Scorpio. Scorpio, what's coming up for you with this new moon in Cancer, please? This new moon in Cancer. This new moon in Cancer. And Scorpio, we've got the Seven of Cups. So mm, this is a time where you can really lose yourself. You can feel very ungrounded. I would not recommend this time for you. Or Well, it depends on who you are and what you want to experience. But um, if you're a softer type, if you're a type that is more gentle, empathic, then this might not be the time, sorry, to go on any kind of visionary, enhanced visionary quests, let's call it, okay? This, this, this would really be a time where um, things would get kind of spooky for you. So, or depending on who you are, like I said, if you have a tougher time opening up to those realms, then this might be the time where the door unlocks and you just shoot through. 
So, but either way, it's a magical, murky, misty time where everybody else is having this clarity in their life. You're already pretty clear. You're already pretty clear. So when this clarity actually happens, you go into confusion. You go into, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what's real now. I knew before because I was relying on these and these and these senses, but now this is what I'm seeing, but I don't know if I can believe what I'm seeing. And so there's this, this confusion that I'm feeling that is coming up with the Seven of Cups, not knowing what the right way forward is, not knowing what to choose, not knowing what the right decision is. And then we have the Three of Wands. So your journal prompt, interesting, because here we have the window, right? Clarity, clear sight, the Three of Wands, being able to see what's coming in, what's coming in towards you, towards you, what they're bringing you. And so the Three of Wands has, you know, all your ships coming in. So you can start right, what do I see? What do I perceive? What do I make note of in any situation that you're focusing in on strongly during this time? So how do I perceive my relationship? How do I perceive my place of work? How do I perceive myself? How do I perceive my family? What am I seeing? And really have a look at what you're seeing in the now, because then you'll know what chips are coming in for you. Because what you focus on is where your energy goes. Where your energy goes is where your action flows from. Where your action flows from, that's the response that the world is going to give back to you. So really have a look and you can utilize that to gain actual clarity, because this is a time where you, you've like, whoa, whoa, this is fun. Ah, okay, moving on to Sagittarius. Sagis, what's coming up for you with this new moon in Cancer, please? New moon in Cancer for Sagittarius. New moon in Cancer for Sagittarius. And we've got the Seven of Wands, okay, and the King of Wands. All right, Seven of Wands, Sag. You may be feeling like you're burning a candle at both ends, yeah? And in this energy, for whatever reason, you're really feeling the isolation, that you don't really acknowledge or allow others to know about. Yeah. You feel like you're having to do everything. Even if you're surrounded by friends and family, there's this experience that you're going through that is very, very, and um, very, very uh, difficult for you to share with others. Now, some of you are also stepping up and out for the first time. Some of you are really getting out there, showing yourself, showing up. Um, there may be a lot of visibility in what it is that you do and how you present yourself. You may be absolutely unique, but there's something about uniqueness, being seen, showing up and being heard. You may also be in the media or, or something in that direction or thinking of something's in that direction. You may also be standing up for yourself in a certain situation, setting your boundaries. But there's this energy through however this, this wants is showing up in your experience, this energy of aloneness. I won't say loneliness, but aloneness that flows through. Next up, you have the King of Wands, which is your journal prompt. And this journal prompt, in light of the Seven of Wands standing up for yourself, is what is my source of power, right? Where does this lightning come from that lights my stick? Like, where is my source of power? Now, it's really important once you've found out where your source of power is that you nurture it. And the second thing that is important when you find out where your source of power is that you let nobody else know nobody is allowed to know where your source of power is, where you derive your power from, your willpower, your will to live, your will to fight. That is for you and you alone to know. So you can go in and find what nourishes me, what nurtures my soul, what lets me feel good about being here and being myself, what helps me take care of myself. Go into that and see where it leads you, okay? Become the king over your own power. Alrighty, moving on to Capricorn, yeah? Capricorn, this new moon in Cancer. What's coming up for you, please? Capricorn, what's your message? New moon in Cancer, Capricorns. Now, I'm already picking up this kind of energy. And um, I have to reshuffle. The exact same cards came up. Capricorn, sorry, new moon in Cancer energy. Capricorn, new moon in Cancer energy, please. Capricorn, new moon in Cancer energy. And we've got, yeah. So the Wheel of Fortune, new moon in Cancer, Capricorn in Cancer, right? So you're you're on that axis. And um, 
Whew. This moon is definitely going to set something off in, in Capricorn. It's it's the energies are turning the wheel. And um, it's almost like I saw a windmill at night. And I saw the, the windmill wrote, you know, spinning its wheels, but it wasn't night and it was spinning the wheels because of the moonlight heating up the air or moving the air in some way. And that air spinning the wheels on the, and it was just an instant image download. You guys know. So, but it feels as if this energy is really starting to get something moving within you that has been stuck for a very long time. This is a life cycle shift, right? This is a shift of the ages. So this could be anything, your perspective, uh, idea. It could be an initiation that is happening during this time. So something about your life has come to an end, right? So it may be the first, I don't know. You, you've just finished your university or you're just graduating college or something like that. And that phase of your life from childhood to the end of college has now come to an end. That's the kind of energy that I'm feeling with this new moon in Cancer. So now something new is beginning and it's actually you learning to take care of yourself, Capricorn. It's not that you couldn't do that before, but you did that in a very functional way, in a way that just made you an operating member of society, in a way that made you just get the bare bone minimum done that made you just function basically. But now it's really about nurturing and taking care of yourself like a mother would a child, a loving mother would a child. And that that impetus has passed or that energy has passed from your actual mother and your actual caretakers to you. Okay. And you're now becoming a mom of yourself in a sense with this new moon in cancer. So we can see the energy of this moving and with you taking on that mission and you deciding, oh, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of this little seed inside me. I'm going to water it and watch it grow. This is going to shift your life forward. Now your journal prompt Capricorn, look at that. Isn't this your card? Yeah. Right? King of Pentacles. Woof stepping into your success, stepping into your power. What does it take for me to feel successful? What would it take for me to feel good about myself? What does it take to make me feel worthy? So I want you to focus on in your journal prompts, worth, success, and value. Those things, what does it take or what are they to me or what are my worth, my value? Where do I find my value and my worth? Where do I find um, meaning to life in a sense. I don't want you to write down the meaning to your life. Don't do that. <laughs> that is not for you to determine, right? But what brings you a sense of meaning to life or into life, right? And really focus in on that, okay? But this is definitely a moon that is allowing you to step into the next level of your your evolution, your growth pathway, it's its going to have an impact on your inner realms and inner worlds. And you'll see if you roll with it, of course, and you you the mission, so to speak, you'll, you'll see the ramifications and the manifestations in the outer world. And you will have learned a lesson about how things in the universe go, right? And how to actually control a situation is by surrendering to what is and how to um, really make things grow and shift and move within yourself Aquarius and your card already hopped out Aquarius what's coming up for you with this new moon in Capricorn please Aquarius so your card that jumped out of the deck for Aquarius is the transformation card now this card is called death but it's not actually a death card it has little to well you know um, the cards show me a different card when they're speaking about actual physical death, which I will not reveal and I won't talk about it. But this death card usually has to do with a transformation. It has to do with you finally shedding the skin that you've been wearing, that you've outgrown, that doesn't fit you, match you, and you loving yourself enough with this new moon and cancer energies to just be you. And see how the skeleton stands? The skeleton is a skeleton because it's not cloaked in anything. It is just what it is. It's the raw, naked, bare truth. The raw, naked, bare truth is showing itself here. And so you're coming into a time where you're able to just be you. You're able to step out of the closet. You're able to just, just shake those bones and you're able to just be you. And you're loving yourself enough to be that and to allow yourself to finally do that. 
And that's what the energy of this time is also calling for for you. You've got the Knight of Pentacles. Um, where have I been stuck in a rut? Okay, that's your journal prompt. Where have I been stuck in a rut doing the same things over and over and over again? Where have I not allowed myself to grow? Where have I been in service to other than myself? Whom do I serve other than myself? And you'll probably be surprised doing that. That will be already a liberating recognition when you realize whom you actually serve. Okay, because the Knight of Pentacles is a hard worker and a servant. It's not yet a king. It's an energy that is in service to something other than itself. And once you recognize whom do I serve, who am I in service to? Once you realize it's not to your own life or yourself and you realize what it actually is, what has been seen cannot be unseen. <laughs> the truth has been revealed. And there's another part of your soul that you've liberated from some kind of clutch, okay? So again, this energy is allowing you to go there because it's pulling back the veil and you're able to see into your own inner workings and you're able to change structures that need changing within those workings. And you can do it in a loving, kind way with a willingness of a cancer, cancer mom, right? With a willingness to, to, to the future and move forward and allow yourself to evolve, develop, and grow. And last but not least, but Pisces, what is this new moon in Cancer bringing you? What do you need to know? New moon in Pisces, what's coming up for you? New moon in Pisces, a uh, new moon in Cancer, I'm sorry, for Pisces. New moon in Cancer for Pisces, what's coming up for you? New moon in Cancer for Pisces, what's coming up? And we've got, ooh. All these same cards coming up here. One second, you guys. New moon and cancer for Pisces. New and cancer for Pisces. And cancer for Pisces. And we've got the high priestess. So Pisces, um, this is going to be a super intuitive time for you. This is where, whoa, everything is going to be so clear to you. You're going to feel in tune. You're going to feel attuned aligned it's a great time to do that if you're not aligned you'll find out how to fix your alignment you'll find out what you need to do to realign to highest you'll find out what do you need to do to um, re-energize on those deepest levels feeling comfortable with the unknown again feeling comfortable with this energy of whoa anything goes. I don't know what's tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm okay with that. I'm completely in tune with the present moment as is. And um, there's this coming to peace as well, finding closure and coming to peace with the past. The past is not hunting you anymore. You're not hunting it. You're not digging around in it. You're just allowing the chips to fall where they may. And you're perfectly at peace with that. So I feel Pisces, it's it's like um, this, you're trying the process a lot more than all the other 11 signs. <laughs> you're, you're trying the process a lot more. You're allowing the process to unfold. You're um, observing Saturn do his thing, like the gardener moving through the garden, creating the, the pathways or the channels where water is supposed to flow to flower that garden. And Neptune is the one that allows the water to come in, okay? And um, it, it's as if there's this this energy, you're you're able to swim in it. You're really able to swim in it and just take it moment by moment by moment. So really, this is a great time for you to follow your intuition, follow your inner inclinations, pay attention to what's going on to your, when you're feeling world. Don't just ignore it, dismiss it, push it to the side. Pay attention to what rises up in you. And it doesn't mean that you have to take action on it or live in, you know, make life choice decisions, but pay attention and focus in on dissolving resistances and blocks, okay, and um, to whatever is coming through for you, especially if you're, you're in difficult emotions in a certain situation, just pay attention to them, just feel them, you don't have to act on them, you don't have to articulate them, just feel them and let them course through you and see, allow them to be flushed out by the energy and see what comes after. And what comes next? Ooh, you've got the world as your journal prompt. Mm. What makes me feel complete? What makes me feel whole? 
And if you're in a situation that needs healing, look at it from a holistic perspective. What are all the parts of you that need healing that contribute to the situation that you're going through where you feel like, oh, this needs to, I need to work on this. Okay, what parts of you, the past, the future, the present, the emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, what parts of you, your memories, your your belief system, and you don't, again, you don't have to go in there and start fixing and working and, and doing all that because Saturn and Neptune, all they're all going to do that. But you just need to be aware. This is like an eye, right? You just need to be aware. And what um, your journal prompt is, so um, for the one Pisces, it's what parts of me or um, what was it? I just said it. What is the holistic way of healing myself or what would I need to heal? What would bring me closure? What would make me feel like I have closure? Okay, to, to um, what would I need for closure? All around closure to something. But for others of you, it's going to be the other half of Pisces is what would make me feel like I have a mission in this world? What would make me feel like I have a mission or I'm actually completing my mission or I'm doing my mission, I'm on my mission in this world. How will I feel? And we're not focusing on what your mission is because then you go into your mind and you start judging and so on. But what would I feel like if I were actually fulfilling my mission in this world? And once you identify that feeling, okay, but you're a part of this world, Pisces, and this energy is here to remind you of that, and that you're the key to unlocking how you, you know, um, what your mission is in the world or how you move through the world is your feeling state, your intuitive state. So give yourself space for that, okay? You guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the energies. Don't get flushed away. <laughs> And I will see you in the next video. And of course, check out the description box below this video. I'm happy to get to know you and meet you in case you so desire. There are sessions and readings that I do offer personal readings, as you guys know as well. And I'm happy to see you there. Take care. Bye.